At the conclusion of my training at the Echo Bull, I embraced a different perspective about restoration and conservation, and by extension and construction. Restoration is simply a clinical procedure, although there are French institutions that are the counterpart of the Echo Bull that solely analyze and proceed in strictly scientific terminology. Restoration is also a very human experience. In order to be a faithful restorer, one must read the spirit of the piece before him or her. Restoration has, of course, elements of modern science meshed with traditional rules of construction, but it is also an implicitly developed sensitivity towards the artisans themselves. The ability to read the makers, the original makers, particular style and idiosyncrasies is paramount. This is not about perfecting the overall persona of the object or making completely the wear and tear of time, but it is about continuing the original intent. Without seemingly frivolous, you must truly allow the object to speak to you in order to do it justice. Thus, we are discussing another element of restoration that brings the past to inhabit the present and a kind of complicity between the originator and the restorer. Nowhere else was this instilled as deeply as in the sculpting atelier at the Echo Bull. The Echo Bull is fortunate to have an instructor such as Patrick Blanchard. This atelier is unlike any other in the restoration program. It is tucked away in the older section of the school within the attic and has within it a feel and mystique of another generation or multiple generations of the past. Massive windows flood the vast space with imposing light. The atelier is filled to capacity with workbenches, molds of period sculptors and machinery and grinding machines and, and sharpening machines. Patrick Blanchard is a relatively young man to be achieved such a reputation, not only as a sought after restorer and reproducer of rare sculpted pieces, Paris and throughout Europe, but as an instructor hoping to inspire new generations of sculptors. He is an impassioned artist that has also won the prestigious competition that gave them the title of Best Artist in a Year of France many times over. A competition that will carry over from the era of the corporation where a jury of master artisans judges the chef d'oeuvre among the finest artisans of France. Blanchard divides his time between his own work at his own atelier in the backyard of his Paris, in the backyard of his home outside of Paris, and his course at the Eco Bull. I was extremely fortunate to have worked a few weekends privately him, with him in his atelier and was greatly impressed by his nimble abilities to juggle so much. I had great interest in developing my somewhat limited skills as a sculptor at that time and was able to advance quickly thanks to his personal guidance and gentle, gentle demeanor. Blanchard's instruction was technically very important to me, solidifying proper hand gestures and tool manipulations, chisel sharpening, always a delicate operation, or identifying the motifs of each period. Even offered a course in drawing, indispensable in sculpting, that was offered five days a week. But perhaps the most difficult aspect to master was recognizing the follow and following the style and idiosyncrasies of the originators. This complicity I mentioned before between the originator and the restorer is less a technique than is a mental or emotional process. It is a kind of submersion into another frame of mind, seeking the spirit of the hands that brought life to what is before you, and guidance. It is indeed wandering into the past, imaging, imagining the conditions that other life existed, the tools that were used at that time, and the context of that existence. A correct, correct sculpting restoration will be consistent with the feel of the original parts, it must not seek to correct, but to keep the imperfections that are all hallmarks of handmade products. All of this Blanchard was able to transmit, by extension I believe, did justice to the ensemble of course within the program. Ultimately, this attitude can be applicable to every aspect in restoration. 
once I became familiar with the various ways of getting from the ECO Bull to my, my many other training courses, I became aware that the names of the streets held another piece of the puzzle of Paris to me, another link with history and furniture making. The Echo Bull is tucked away in a U-shaped street off of the broad thoroughfare of Diderot, which runs parallel to the Faubourg Saint Antoine, that runs parallel to an equally broad street by the name of Voltaire, all merging into Nation. Together, these names parallel aptly, I believe, the emergence of the creative spirit, one which manifested itself in wood. Ornamentations and carvings and new categories of furniture. The other was crafted in the mind, a surge of creative thinking that would address the problems of man, questions that needed to be asked, and of course answered also. It is amusing to me that Diderot, the encyclopedist, an unprecedented collector of knowledge and information, and has the Echo Bull within its midst, an unprecedented institution that houses and propagates the vast knowledge and information of furniture and the beaux arts. And it is somewhat comforting to know that the Faubourg Saint Antoine, even as it stands today, is ensconced between two of the most important names of its generation. A kind of testament to the prolific talents and the ideals of the 18th century encompassed. There is another aspect of furniture making that I would like to take the time to explore with you. Not all of the great works in wood were constructed and completed just in Paris. I don't believe that the height of craftsmanship was either exclusively Parisian, nor was it always highly ornamentated. I have had the privilege of seeing such astonishing pieces adorned solely by incomparable, incomparable wood sculpting, sculpting that is so alive and vibrant, vibrant that any addition would have been sacrilegious. There were magnificent artisans in all parts of France, in Normandy, Bretagne, Lyon, Toulouse, Arles. Unfortunately, like the colonies in America, those are rustic places, and those artisans are anonymous to us today. But their contribution to the history of furniture making is undeniable. I was especially drawn to those works of art because my own profession has always been solid, massive wood, and nothing but wood. My love and attraction to curly or tiger maple is the basis for my career as I sit here today as a furniture maker. And I've always believed that wood, and especially sculpted wood, speaks to the purest, the language of all. I was deeply moved by those regional masterpieces from an array of periods that experience, an experience that I hope each of you will one day be able to attain. The spectrum of period of furniture and the beaux arts is immense. In France, and I urge you to all consider beyond the genius of bull marquetry, the breathtaking, breathtaking, breathtaking sumptuousness of bronze ornamented case pieces, the endless variations of veneering and the overwhelming richness of gilded console chairs, frames, and looking glasses to include the regional highly styled armoires, vassiers, petrins, clocks, etagères, verres. The field is formidable and the pleasure is mine and it is great. Unfortunately, this is a very difficult time for antique dealers en France. One of the most renowned antique markets in Paris, the Pousse d'Ouen, is facing a crisis. Since September 11, 2001, the, all the American clientele has all but disappeared. We still come, but in much smaller numbers, and even though our Europeans do come as well as the Japanese, their American base was immeasurable. Now it's been replaced by the Chinese and the Russians. What used to be a lucrative weekend beginning quite early Friday morning up until Monday late afternoon has been reduced to Saturdays and Sundays at the Pousse. Where the 75% of the boutiques are closed on Fridays and fewer than half stay open all day Monday. This is quite dramatic given that less than 10 years ago 
the market would open at 5 a.m. in the morning on Fridays when the merchants would receive their goods. Restaurants would open to serve breakfast to those working in the market. Today, the prices are extremely high and one must be quite adroit in the estimating of quality, condition, and period of the piece and be willing to go through the entire pousse frequently, quite frequently. There are deals to be had if you know the protocol and know what you're looking for. This opens the door to the brocon, but that is another situation where knowledge is endless to ferret out the authentic from the bogus.